Hmm. Something seems a little bit off about this side of the shop. Could it have something to do with that being empty? And that contrivance being out? Maybe. So I've had a couple days off. Um, I'm trying to get some things taken care of on the Cougar. So I ended up going ahead and uh, slapping the engine in temporarily for right now. Um, I don't see why it couldn't stay in, but I did put it in for mock-up to see if the front brackets would work, which I think it will. This is kind of close to where the battery will be, but it should be fine. Um, I am worried about where the AC pump is going to sit, um, if it's going to hit the valve cover or not, but time will tell. I got one pulley on for the power steering, still waiting on USPS, I think they lost my water pump pulley and crank pulley. And then I need to get a tensioner and then the front dress should be done. Um, but pretty much everything else with the engine is done. Um, long block wise, I still need to do spark plug wires and do a custom fit. Um, I got a set over on the table. I got to get the headers in. I have those cleaned up and painted with some high temp paint. Um, so the engine may need to come back out for install of those or at least get lifted up because there's not a whole lot of room and you might be able to see, let's see if I can get over there to it, the transmission is in as well. So I got that in today. Um, I do need to fit it a little bit better. It seems like the shifter is a little bit too much towards the passenger side, so I'm going to trim the shifter hole a little bit. Um, no big deal. I'm going to run fuel lines. I do have the fuel tank installed. I don't know if I can get back there to it or not. Let's check. I did get the trunk lid and hood repainted. As you can see, there's no more tiger striping in it, which is great. So I redid those last month, month before, something like that, right before it got cold. So trunk is done. I got it wet tan and buffed out. The hood hiding over there for the time being. I haven't even touched that one. So with the engine and stuff going in, I'm not going to worry about that until I'm done with that. And then I can put the hood back on. But there's the EFI tank. I'm starting to run my AN lines. Uh, return and supply both and all the way front and rear so the way that the factory had them or had the hard line was up underneath pretty much right where that green line or green tape is the hard line ran all the way down this side um, I'm not able to do that with the AN line so I'm gonna run them up the transmission tunnel a little bit but I wanted to get the transmission in there to see if I actually had space. So, um, I did get the transmission in today. I'll uh, actually put this up on the lift because I'm gonna take it back out. I gotta do some fitting and um, some other stuff, but mainly just wanted to mock it up and see if I had room for it and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, let me put it up on the lift and show you what I got going on. All right, there's the TKO 500 in there. Um, I ended up going with a modern drive line cross member, pretty well built. Um, I was gonna originally fab one up to make it fit, but for the price of this and the transmission mount that already takes the guesswork out of it, um, pretty much a no brainer. Saved me a whole day of fabbing something up. So um, the other potential issues I could see, well, See, the transmission boot is actually hitting the um, side of the shifter hole. So I'm going to, I marked out where I'm going to notch that just a little bit. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. It looks fairly centered. Um, there is no side to side adjustment with any of this. It's all just, they're slotted front and rear. I guess I could slot these and try to shift the transmission over a little bit. Um, not really sure what the best case scenario would be. 
I guess I could pull a string from center line of this to the rear end, but it is gonna be offset a little bit anyways. You don't want a straight line um, from your transmission to rear end. You do wanna put a little bit of load on that U-joints in the system, so. Um, I think as long as it doesn't get in the way of anything up here when I cut it out, I think I'm just gonna run it as is. And uh, cause the engine is bolted in, you can't, there is no adjustment in the uh, engine mounts. That one's all the way at the top. And that one is the same. So I don't think even messing with loosening up the engine mounts, it's really gonna gain me anything. So I'm gonna pull this all back apart and uh, do my fuel lines. You can see right here, <laughs> um, that green tape is where I'm gonna run my fuel lines. Obviously way uh, cleaner than that, but run them up and then, oh shit. Run them through this little area here and then up to the sniper on the back side of the intake. So that should be a pretty clean install. Um, I got my two lines back here. I got plenty enough. So I think what I'm gonna do is I might have to do a, a hard 90 here with a couple fittings and some uh, small fittings in between. Um, Cause I don't think they'll bend quite that sharp. So round here should be fine. I'm gonna use little, uh, these little aluminum hose holders. I got a bunch of them, so um, I think what I am gonna do, probably not right there, but um, well, maybe, who knows. Um, put some of these nut certs in the body, some smaller ones like 832 or 1032 or something like that. Take that little uh, center bolt out, maybe drill it out and through bolt that to the nut cert in the body. That way they're being held in and it looks a little bit cleaner and nothing will rub anything. So that's my plan for tonight is get this back out, start laying out fuel lines and uh, get, get the body trimmed a little bit. I do have a little spot on the transmission. Let's see if I can see it. One of the top covers is uh, hitting one of the pinch welds or one of the body overlap spots on the car. So I'm gonna just massage that top cover a little bit from either the top cover or another shifter housing plate or something. So yeah, all in all, it's coming along. I'm getting uh, excited and antsy to start this thing up, but it's gonna be a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to wait for everything else to get done, unfortunately, before I start it up and run it because it is a roller motor, so I don't have to break in the cam or anything, but I need to seat these uh, rings real good. And I can't do that just by running it, I don't think. So unless I find an article or something that can show me how to run it in and seat the rings good, just uh, sit in the garage. Um, might be sitting for a little bit, but it's coming along good. Happy with it. Oh man, those lights look like the people who see at cookout with the little lights in their wheel wheels.